Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is bulk density and tap density of powders as per USP chapter 616. We will learn on how the bulk density test is carried out and its importance in today's video. The bulk density is important parameter for the granulator of dosage forms. Depending upon the bulk density, the shape and size of the tablet or capsule varies. What is density? Density is the ratio of mass of the material by its volumes. Density is the weight of material divided by the volume the material of same weight occupies. This is reported as weight per ml. It's a simple calculation. So the density is also referred as weight per ml. Both are same. Specific gravity and weight per ml are not same. Specific gravity is the ratio of weight of a material of a specific volume divided by the weight of water at the same volume at the same temperature. Since this is a ratio of same parameter weight, there will not be any unit of measure for specific gravity. It is a number, whereas density is reported as weight per ml. There are two parameters. One is weight, the other is the volume. Bulk density is the terminology used for particularly free-flowing powders. This test is mostly used for APIs and for granulations. The principle is same in both the cases. Bulk density is also called as apparent density or loose density or untapped density. These are other names for bulk density. Since the density is for loose powder or untapped powders, these names are apt. Tap density is obtained after tapping the measuring cylinder as prescribed in the compendia. This is another important information on density. The measuring cylinder in which the material is taken will be tapped for 250 times or 500 times or 1250 times or till constant volume is achieved. Sometimes the customer specifies the number of taps as per their process requirements. How much the material could be compacted for making dosage forms? We will learn some more information on usefulness of this parameter in coming up slides. Tap density is always more than untapped density. Since the volume occupied decreases on tapping several times and the volume is in the denominator of the formula mass by volume, the value of tap density obviously increases. 1 by 2 is greater than 1 by 4, isn't it? Let us see the methodology. There are definite specifications for each item of the equipment used for bulk density test. Refer USP chapter 616 for more accurate dimensions of the parts of the apparatus. They include 1 mm or greater sized sieve. 1 mm mesh is required to break if there are any agglomerates formed during storage. Size of the measuring cylinder for materials with bulk density around 0.6 grams per ml. You can use 250 ml measuring cylinder 
and if the apparent density is too low or too high, a 100 ml cylinder should be used. Support holder for the measuring cylinder. Number of taps per minute. Sample weight required. All these parameters are well described in USP 616 chapter. However, we will discuss more in the next slide. First step is to pass this test sample through a 1 mm mesh to break any agglomerates that may have formed during storage. The sieve is required to break any agglomerates. This should be done gently. The pressure should be so less that the material nature should not be changed by this pressure. If the powder is free flowing and there are no agglomerates visibly, you can avoid deceiving. Sample size should be 100 grams and cylinder size should be 250 ml. If you use a 250 ml cylinder and a 100 gram sample, the volume occupied will be slightly above 60% mark. If the apparent density is around 0.6 grams per ml, this is correct method for carrying out the bulk density test for free flowing materials with an apparent density of around 0.6 grams per ml. Volume readability of the cylinder should be 2 ml. Sample size and the cylinder size can change for too low or too high apparent density materials. If the apparent density is too low or too high, you can use the 100 ml measuring cylinder. You must take adequate weight to see that the sample occupies any volume between 50 ml and 100 ml. Here, the volume readability should be 1 ml. Slowly introduce the sample into the measuring cylinder in a slightly slant position freely. This should be done so that the sample flows into the cylinder freely and continuously. Level gently and carefully the sample in the cylinder with a gentle sideways tapping. After transferring, the uneven sides of the powder sample should be leveled with gentle tapping on sideways. Now, measure the volume occupied by the sample. This is the prescription for method 1. Calculate the apparent density as sample weight divided by volume occupied, that is M by V. Now you know the weight taken for the test and measured the volume occupied. Calculation is a simple one, mass by volume. Report the value in grams per ml. Density is always reported as grams per milliliter. The test can be done by a specific sized volumeter also. In method 2, there is a specific apparatus for measuring the apparent density. In this method, sample is weighed after transferring the sample through the apparatus into a fixed volume cup. The sample is passed through a 1 mm mesh and through a baffle assembly fitted with glass baffles for free flowing. A 25 cm cube square cup or a 35 cm cube round cup is used for the purpose. There are two cups with two different volumes are available. You can choose any one for testing. Scrape carefully the extra powder using the blade of a spatula and weigh the material. Weigh the cup with the sample accurately. You know the volume as 25 cubic centimeters or 35 cubic centimeters depending upon the cup used. Calculate 
in the same way m by v you know the weight of the sample and volume calculation is very simple weight by volume report the value as grams per ml there is yet another method method 3 in which a specific designed cup and a cap assembly with a volume of 100 ml is used this is similar to method 2 after passing through 1 mm mesh to break any lumps if present fill the cup till it overflows as in method 2 the cup is filled with the, the sample material scrape out carefully excess material from the top of the cup using the blade of the spatula weigh the sample and calculate the apparent density as weight divided by volume which is 100 ml in this case this is a cylindrical cup and cap assembly the diameter of the cylindrical cup is 50.5 mm and the height 50 mm after subtracting the base 2 mm see the figure in usp chapter 616 if you calculate by the formula pi r square h of the cylinder you get a value of 100 here or the radius is half of the diameter that is 50.5 divided by 2 which equals to 25.25 so pi is 22 by 7 multiplied by square of 25.25 and height 50 you will get 100 ml calculation will look like this weight by 100 it's a simple calculation to understand here volume is fixed as 100 ml cap density in method one the cylinder is fixed to the holder and tapped for 500 times and 1250 times let us understand what is tap density by definition it is clear that the sample is tapped several times and density is determined hence it is called tapped density so the apparatus taps automatically for a set of 500 times initially measure the volume in ml continue the tapping on the same sample for 1250 taps again measure the volume if the difference is not more than 2 ml the volume after 1250 taps is considered for calculation of tap density if the value exceeds 2 ml continue for another 1250 taps till it is within 2 ml please note that 2 ml is the least count for a 250 ml cylinder least count means readability fewer taps may also be allowed as long as the test method is validated if the apparent density is too low or too high a 100 ml cylinder may be used the procedure is same as done for 250 ml cylinder only difference is that the acceptance criteria is only 1 ml because the readability or least count for a 100 ml cylinder will be only 1 ml similar procedure is applicable for method 2 and method 3 with minor modifications in the apparatus the modifications include dimensions of the cam the settling apparatus and the cylinder support most of the marketed tap density testers will comply to these requirements but just for confirmation you may check the dimensions as prescribed in the compendia once other important parameter compressibility index is indication of powder's ability to flow influencing the bulking properties of the powder 
This index helps to understand the characteristics of the powder while compressing into tablets or any other dosage forms. Compressibility index is calculated as 100 multiplied by apparent volume of the sample minus final tapped volume of the sample divided by the apparent volume of the sample. Apparent volume is the loose volume, untapped. It will be more than tapped volume always. Hosner ratio, which gives support information for powder's ability to flow and is calculated as apparent volume divided by the final volume. This is also a simple formula to calculate. I hope that you understood the intricate requirements of bulk density and tap density as per USP chapter 616. Similar kind of information is also available in European Pharmacopoeia as 2.9.34 section. Thanks for watching. For more videos, Please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.